attention, please. So I'm asking Vero to please say a few words uh, to us about Yuri. We are beloved Yuri. Thank you. Thank you for Ambassador, Council General, Mr. Pastor Ishtwa, and all of my friends and family to taking the time to commemorate the life of my late husband, Lovash Lovi George. Today is a day for celebrating his life and contributions to the New York Hungarian community. It is a day of celebration rather than memorialization because he lived his life filled with energy and enthusiasm and this is how he would have preferred to have this gathering. Born in Budapest, Hungary in 1931 to parents consisting of a Greek Orthodox mother and a Hungarian Jewish father, his family settled in northern Hungary in the small town of Loshons. Upon the death of his parents, while he was just a teenager, he went to live with his grandparents until World War II, at which time he was hiding with a Hungarian Christian family to avoid his deportation to a Nazi death camp. He was then made to witness his grandparents being taken away to Auschwitz. Because he was unable to stay with his adopted family long term, he set off as a teenager to Budapest in search of his relatives and wound up living there with his cousin, Shoj Endre, the then Hungarian Jewish leader and famous writer. It is while living there under the communist regime that George acquired his taste for the freedoms enjoyed by citizens of the rest of the free world and his rebellious thoughts against communism. In one instance, demonstrating his objection, the ban against jazz music, he formed the jazz band, typical of him. In 1956, George joined the Hungarian freedom fighters in their opposition to the Soviet occupation of Hungary. Once Hungary was occupied, he escaped along with a wave of Hungarian refugees to New York City and settled there to eventually become a successful businessman. He continued working for this cause for the remainder of his life and also was a reporter for a local Hungarian newspaper, which helped spreading the news of the plight of the Hungarians. In 1957, Upset with the inclusion of the Hungarian flag bearing the Soviet hammer sickle emblem among the flags of the other free countries within the United States, George ripped down the Hungarian flag, removed the center emblem. The flag was then raised with the hole in its center, but without its symbol of Soviet occupation and repression. This event was captured by a photographer and this image and related news article was published by major newspaper and periodicals. He was also Secretary General of the Hungarian Freedom Fighters National Federation and a long-standing member of its Central Governing Council. George always strive to promote his Hungarian roots and Hungarian culture by maintaining a presence within the local Hungarian community, especially as a member of the first Hungarian literary society. Eventually became the society's cultural director. In that role, he organized numerous events, including concerts, and musical performances for which he played an active role in bringing Hungarian performance to New York City, especially opera singers and traditional Hungarian gypsy musicians. In 2006, 
He organized a 50th year anniversary of the Hungarian Revolution at the Carnegie Hall. And for this and all of his contributions to the local Hungarian community, the Republic of Hungary presented him with its highest civilian commendation. I am fortunate and proud to be his wife and having been a witness to and part of all of his efforts and contributions. He was my loving and supporting husband. He spoiled me, drive me everywhere to my work in the hospital, to shopping, to my rehearsals, and get involved with my orchestra, the symphonic pops. I, he was my best friend too. There will never be another Lovas jury and we will all miss him dearly. We want to express our special thanks and welcome to uh, Ambassador Istvan Pastor, Consul General of Hungary, and we ask you to say a few words. Dear Vera, dear, dear friends, uh, dear family members, um, it's been mentioned so many times, you know, how much you appreciate me being here, but uh, it's the least I could do. Uh, Thank you. Uh, George welcomed me with, with a very open heart and a very good humor when I arrived uh, three years ago. And uh, <clears throat> we had some uh, very educational conversations. Usually the education was on my, to my benefit, so to speak. Uh, I will never forget his good humor, sometimes his sarcasm, and uh, obviously nobody could deny how much devotion he felt towards his native country, the cause of 56, to his friends, even in times when there were maybe slight disagreements. And uh, I'm sure he is in a very good place right now. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, from where he is now, he is probably just shaking his head, you know, what's the big hoopla about him passing away? And uh, I think we could just all hope that we will meet him once again someday. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, has received many expressions of sympathies, condolences. And I would like to share with you one that a very close friend sent to her from Florida, I believe. Yes. Yeah, her name is uh, is Julie Franco, and her brother has been uh, the connection to the Yale Symphony Orchestra. That, because of this connection, they were present in Carnegie Hall and in all the celebrations of the Hungarian Revolution that George Lovas organized. And they were there, the orchestra played. And this is what she wrote. And she is a English teacher, so therefore she translated her letter that was written in Hungarian, but translated into English, and I read. What can one say about a person who was constantly swarming, moving, and doing something important because he either wanted to change a nation's fate or to make life better for his family and friends or to motivate the youngsters to play sports 
if we can only talk about him in the past tense. He was a fortunate man because he easily found his place in his chosen country and he discovered my fabulous childhood friend. We used to play together in the same sandbox exactly 73 years ago. This is how Jury used to introduce me to people I had not, I had not met earlier. How proud he was before, during, and after Veronica's concert. And he did not mind her practicing a lot, which could not have been the most pleasant experience. When I moved to Long Island with my family in 1986, I was thrilled because we were able to be together a lot again, but this time we no longer played in the sandbox, but my children did. Since 2011, I live in Florida, and I regret that I cannot be there to console my friend in person. I send my sad notes and sincere sympathy to the family and friends who love Jury. Here's another letter sent to Vera by attorney Michael First, who is talking about the historical importance of George's work concerning the 1956 Hungarian Revolution. Look at his conclusion. This historical achievement will never fade away, and we can all be students of understanding what happened partially because of his role, mission, personality, zealous dedication. The Magyars, Gentiles and Jews, have showed the whole world the way for the righteousness, especially your late husband, who had to survive as a teenager orphan, the Hungarian Holocaust, hiding in Hungary just a little over a decade earlier. We can be thankful for our fortune to know your husband and being able to be proud of our background. With great respect, Michael. Now I want to change hats and also express the sympathies and condolences on behalf, and I'm sure as we go around and talk, some of the members of the board of the First Hungarian Literary Society, in which Yuri was, as you heard it in the speech by Vera, uh, he was uh, the head of the cultural committee and did fantastic work for decades. That George will be sorely missed and his presence, uh, his presence will uh, be sorely missed and, uh, and his absence will be felt. Um, we will all miss him and remember him uh, through each of our cultural events. His absence will be, uh, will be felt most. Uh, we miss you, George. I was so fascinating about his energy when I came to 89 and I met him and he organized uh, 56 uh, uh, um, events all the time and we were young I mean four young actor couples who came to from Hungary and we were on the stage and he exactly knew that what he wanted we were sometimes so fascinating about him sometimes he was so afraid I said what are you doing I mean he was so fantastic guy so I know for 33 years and he always proved that for the last moment he always was uh, the Hungarian was her his his heart I mean he was really think about Hungarian culture music television whatever he supported for us all the time even the TV what he did that together with Karl Vardos so I miss him that's for sure I, um, I hardly knew him because I'm a member of the club also, but I don't have time to go to the club all the time. And uh, every time I met him, he had a nice smile on him. He asked me, how are you doing, Alex? And um, he was a very nice man. I only think, only say good things about him, okay? I love him. Judy is a very nice and we fighting every time because, because every time to run to the kitchen problems 
organizing. And I said every time for him is don't do that. I not say nothing for what you do outside. You don't say nothing what I do inside. So she, he is okay, okay, okay. And he's coming every time for the kitchen. Susan, I want to drink. Make at me the strong. Okay, so you know where is my strong? This gin and that tonic. And he's love it, drinking <laughs> for that. So I love him. I love him. Uh, I have I have very fond memories of <laughs> Judy Bachi, Lovash Judy Bachi, from when I was yay high, um, when we used to recite poetry together during the. Um, 56 memorial celebrations and Wagner and Julia Richmond and he was always there and I just remember him being such a positive but really patriotic person and um, he had a great sense of humor and we spoke sometimes um, sometimes about politics, I won't bring up what kind of politics but he just really made me laugh a lot um, and he's going to be really, really missed he was there for so many weddings in our family and funerals in our family and um, I'm going to have some fond memories. He's going to be greatly missed. And thank you for putting this together for, uh, for us. You know very well I was working a lot with uh, Yuri. A lot, a lot, a lot. We fight a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> That's how does it go. He called, he tell me. I said no. He he's start to scream. I hang up. <laughs> One minute later, he called. He said, "Okay, let's start again. We fight again, you know." But the, the end, we always work together. And I really miss him. And I look at the phone. Who calling? You know, I really miss him. And I hope, you know, Vera, you're going to be strong, and and just strong. I love you, Vera. When I find out that Uncle George died, I cried all afternoon and all the memories came into my mind that actually I grew up next to him. Next to him. He teach me a lot of history. I was a child in 1956 and he told me everything. And when we got to the Statue of Liberty in 1968, I had the most beautiful Hungarian dress on the earth, and he put me into the first row. And I was across from President Nixon. He said, Barbara, you have to show that you're Hungarian. And then every time we had a program, he called me, Barbara, let's do a program for the 1956. He called me all the time. I said, Yuri Bacham, I help you just tell me what to do. I really, really miss him. I don't know how we're going to deal with him not being around. That's all I can say. As far as I know about George, George is a man of energy. He is always full of energy, and he is a character. I have a few interactions with George. And I know he's a very patriotic man who value his culture and tradition. And I know him through Vera. I love that. He is very active and energetic and very devoted husband. And he will be missed dearly. Hi, hi. Well, um, Judy was my brother-in-law. And uh, I'd like to remember uh, mostly how he helped us out in the family. And for example, when I got married, uh, my wife, Suzanne, uh, she came out from Hungary, because that's where we got married. And when she came, uh, I had no place to go. Uh, I was living home, and here is my new wife. We can't leave home. Uh, so he graciously offered his apartment. Uh, and that's where we lived for a while. And uh, so, and he was always ready to uh, give to the family whatever he had. He had a huge car, a uh, Chevy, which uh, I think uh, Tommy inherited, and eventually I inherited. And my kids, even today, uh, remember that they grew up in that car. It was such a wonderful car. and. Uh, uh, so, George was part of the family, and we certainly will miss him. Um, and uh, I mean, I, 
He wished to have another one like him, but uh, no one can replace him. We were friends since 1969. We were organizing together in 1976 uh, the Festival of Nations, of Captive Nations. In 1986, the Lincoln Center, the Avery Fisher Hall, which turned out so-so as President Ford turned around since it wasn't completely full and left, didn't come to see us. Although there, there were Hungarians, Never, never that much Hungarians in, in the Avery Fisher Hall. And since friends, just, just my best friend. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Isabella. Um, I was his granddaughter. This is my brother Ben. This is his grandson. Um, he was a great grandfather, always loving and supportive, um, funny, just really awesome to be around. Um, I called him, I called him Nag Papa, I'm sorry, I don't, <laughs> I'm, um, I never learned Hungarian, but I'm sure it means the world to him that all of you guys are here, and it's nice um, for me to see that he had so many people who loved and cared about him, so thank you. Um, Mr. Consul General, all well, friends, family, thank you again um, on our behalf for coming here and as my mother said, really celebrating George's life rather than memorializing it. That's how he would have preferred it. Uh, for all of those of you who had spent time with George, uh, went to events with him, uh, you always knew when he was around, you always knew when he came into the room, never beat around the bush, you knew where he stood. <laughs> Sometimes bad, sometimes good, but you knew where he stood. Um, and uh, he was a fierce, uh, uh, devoted, fiercely devoted to uh, several causes, um, his friends, his family, but also for Hungary. Uh, he, up until, I was just talking to my mother about this, um, two weeks ago, uh, I, excuse my ignorance, but uh, there was a, a, a Hungarian uh, commemoration on March 15th, and he barely knew where he was at that point, but he whispered to my mother that, hey, today is March 15th, and who's going to go and speak? I can't do it, but can somebody go on my behalf? And, you know, r remarkable that that would have still been in his mind when everything else was failing. So it's just an example of, of what Hungary meant to him, but what also he meant to uh, Hungary, uh, being uh, somewhat of a local representative. He never stopped fighting for the causes that he believed in, and he was always generous with his, with his time, with his money, and uh, with all of his contributions. So uh, thank you again for coming. Uh, he was a good man. Um, he lived a long life. He had a tremendous impact on many of those that he came into contact with and for all those that knew him and loved him if you join me if he was here he'd have his tangare and tonic in the air <laughs> so to hopefully as the consul general says that he he would be wondering right the tangare genta but uh, as uh, he so uh, eloquently said that george would say what's the big deal um, hopefully he realizes that he was a big deal and hopefully he can see us toasting him and uh, remembering him and that he'll always be a part of us. So here's to George. Thank you. It's, it's giving me comfort, you know, when end of his life, you know, I ask him, what shall I do for you? And he said, you know what, bring down the violin because I practice upstairs on, in the house. You know, and uh, he said, B play some music. Yes. And I did play, so almost every night we had about half hour music. And uh, I played light music, not like what I'm practicing for the <laughs> orchestra. And uh, he loved that. He was singing with me. One of them was the favorite, 
a fának, faleszek ha fának vagy virága, ez a petőfi vers. And the other one, uh, it's about a lily bird who goes all the way, flies all the way up to the sky because he finds freedom and, uh, and peace over there, a sola kakasmár. That was his favorite, that's what I could say. Uh, so I want to take this uh, moment to uh, tell you about the connection between <clears throat> George Lovas and uh, Hungarian American television. Our first American Hungarian television started to broadcast on January, the 25th of January, 1978. And around that time, he, he was leading this huge furniture store, J. Horn. And immediately he became the first one who started to support the Hungarian television broadcast, the first one in the country, uh, with commercials. And we had that furniture store commercials all the way throughout the years. He supported us. It's called the first American Hungarian television will broadcast a special program that's all about George Lovas. The way it happened is that we are partners with, uh, with uh, Juicy Apatini. We are doing Hungarian television together. That's why we're recording this and thanking all of you. And one thing that what I'm doing now, that's what he used to love. He was the MC. He was the MC on every single event. And he enjoyed so much to announce the guest artists coming from Hungary. I mean, he just loved that. We all remember that. that right, Vera?